I disabled Secure Boot, this is what happened. But first, my name is Steve Smith, this is Tiki Way Weekly, and if you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to click the notification icon to get notifications on when I post these episodes, which is normally on Tuesday, people. And if you want to become a member of this channel and be able to access our monthly live streams that are for members only, as well as our private Discord channel, click the join button down below. So. We're going to be discussing the perils and consequences of disabling Secure Boot in Windows 10. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the features and what happened to me and how I got around it. So first of all, Secure Boot is supposed to be both, supposed to be both a great and secure feature, but it is also simultaneously a horrible idea at the same time. The implementation of Secure Boot is basically this. A signed operating system during the install process allows itself to communicate with the BIOS, which by the way has been possible for a really long time. And during this process, they get a set of PK keys that allow it to be identified as being the correct operating system booting with the computer. If malware were to compromise said keys and signature of the drive, what ends up happening is the UEFI BIOS sensing something wrong prevents the operating system from booting. This is how it's supposed to work. So it is supposed to prevent malicious software from being able to boot up with the computer. Now, here's the thing. That is a very small vector of attack. In recent years, we have seen processors getting flaws related to side channel attacks directly into memory. You don't need to attack the startup of the computer in that sense. And there are plenty of ways around that anyway. And it is end user unfriendly, especially if you're buying a inexpensive computer that you want to install a free operating system on to do whatever the hell you want. And a lot of the time they simply don't have the option to turn off secure boot. You may be able to clear the PK keys, but you won't necessarily be able to install an unsigned operating system. So first of all, how did I disable secure boot in the first place? Let's start off with the why. The reason is, is that I actually clean my computer and one of my drives was not connected correctly after cleaning it. And therefore, when I started it, it didn't match and basically the BIOS forgot the information. So it was preventing my computer from booting as though it had malware, even though it was completely clean in both senses. So the reason why I had to disable Secure Boot is because I couldn't even boot into my operating system anymore, which means if you want to use this feature, make sure you keep backups of the PK keys. Now. The how is, is that you enter into the UEFI BIOS and somewhere buried inside, you can use the manual to your main board, uh, you have the ability to turn off in many cases, not all cases, but in many cases, the secure boot option so that you can actually go and use your computer. Now you may be wondering what happened. The answer is nothing. Nothing at all. What happened when I disabled Secure Boot? Nothing. Of all the security vectors you have to deal with on a daily basis, that is not one that is currently being openly exploited. So provided that you are not a moron on the internet, that you use antiviral and anti-malware software, that you have cold storage, which means backups that are not connected to your computer, and your behavior online doesn't unduly expose you to risks on the internet, you will be fine. Okay? So you can disable Secure Boot, there will be no problem. And here's another thing you might want to remember. If you do a CMOS reset because you're overclocking your computer and some for some reason your computer doesn't want to boot, you'll have the same problem as me anyway. Like this episode if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, share with those that you think would benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com or go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, where you can do things such as view the show notes on this episode, view past other episodes and their show notes, search the website for solutions to your problems, as well as use the contact form to email me directly. 
Thank you for watching and goodbye.